All right, so it's been a minute since we've seen the Fox. Let's see what's going on. Um, obviously a lot, there's an engine in the bay. It's bolted in, there's some stuff hooked up, but I also have left it not so much done because there's some things I'll need to do still. Still need to run some uh, fuel lines from down here where they're at on a four cylinder up and around so that they'll hook onto the four barrel. Um, we still have the HEI distributor. That's probably not gonna stick around. Um, we have our BBK headers. That was a, uh, a deal with a friend of mine. Um, that's done. We got hoses. I still have to figure out a heater hose deal um, because I don't have the metal tubes that run through. And a little bit more important, somebody gacked in the port where I need to actually put the second metal tube down into the intake. So not sure how that's going to work out. I may just run soft lines and put up some kind of brace to keep them out of the way of the engine. Uh, you can see that I've gone through the electrical system and I deed what's there. Uh, this is the four banger electrical system. Um, the car is going to be like 1968 simple. I'm not too worried about it. I just basically want power, the charging system to function and the tax signal for the, uh, gauge cluster to work. After that, I'm not too concerned. Um, Back here, you can see my little Alice in Wonderland quotations, replace me. This is the HVAC line that goes to the heater system and the back end's been chewed up by rodents. So yeah, it's gotta get replaced. Um, the radiator setup is way too good for this car. In fact, it probably is worth as much as the car. This is a frostbite radiator, fan shroud, electric fan. And then this is a uh, balance piece I got from LMR.com. It's big enough to where it'll hold an oversized radiator. We did have to massage it a little because the front end of this car has been massaged a lot. So it didn't take too much to get in. Looks great. Holds the radiator, does what I wanted to do. Um, inside, I'll go in here for a second. So pull the door panels off just to kind of see what's going on. Um, also because I've detinted everything but the quarter windows. <coughs> Excuse me. And I wanted to get the last bit of it. Uh, did some investigation. The stereo system in this car hit. This was a Blaupunk system and not a cheap one at that. Um, all the speakers are Blaupunk. And as you can see from the mangled stereo wiring, they went for broke. They ignore this stuff over here. That's the uh, door chime setup. Um, so... Eventually, once this thing's up and moving, I was to the point of doing a uh, sound system in the car. New hatch weather stripping, take care of a problem I had. New license plate lights up here. New bulbs, the third brake light now works. Um, I'm going to probably have to get a new striker because there's supposed to be a plastic case on it. A new plunger for the hatch uh, light system. I need to see if I can get the hatch light to work. Um, those are minor details, but I wanna get those while I can rip things apart and I feel bad. Managed to get the uh, hatch cover assembly hooked back up properly, though I'm probably gonna have to find that or just replace the whole thing. Got the rear seats where I wanted them. Um, this, I don't know why the window trim is falling out of this car. I can get it to about here, but it refuses to go anymore. So I'm not sure what to do about that. We got the quarter windows. Um, you meant I said I wouldn't tint them. The reason being, you can't fix when they get this damaged. Um, you have to pull out the entire quarter window and replace it, and I'm not keen on doing that yet. Um, Eventually, if this car hangs around long enough, I'm going to have to, but not right now. It is what it is. Uh, you can see my brand new cross member here. This is, I'll pull this out for a minute. So there's two types of cross members you can find on a Mustang. This is the one you want, the double hump design. This allows you to run a uh, dual exhaust system without any interference from the cross member. Um, so not pricey not cheap but worth it this is one of the few items where i would I may say don't bother hunting just go ahead and buy it it's not that much go to the passenger door 
passenger door's outside handle has never worked. And that's because, you see this rod right here? That's supposed to be hooked to something, and it's not. Um, what else have I done? What else? That's pretty much catching you up to speed. Uh, today's program, we've got the fuel filter installed. I'm going to go ahead and put the fuel tank in the car. And progress keeps rolling along. Yeah, crappy, quick paint job. Not too impressed, but not really shocked. Um, looks to be the dark Cabernet, the rest of the car is, or at least the main body is. But here's why I've got the door handle ripped off. So that's the original one that was on the car. You can see the uh, provision for the door rod is gone, plus the whole thing's cooked. This is all metal, provision for the rod right there and it does come with rivets um these are actually supposed to be riveted onto the door yeah there's the rivets it came with which is not a bad thing if i'm going to reshoot the car i'm actually fine with that i would like to pull these off and keep these well decent but it's things like door handles or this little beauty something you wouldn't have given thought to so it's a new trunk striker, hatch striker, call it what you will. Uh, before this, whenever you shut the hatch, the hatch moved around badly. Like, I was afraid the wind was going to catch it and rip it. That's not a problem anymore. So, work progresses. Okay, so here's our fuel tank setup. We've been holding on to this one because we've been waiting on this padding to get in. Now, it seems a little bit silly to wait on padding to put a fuel tank in, but it's necessary. You don't want any rubbing against the body. You definitely don't want metal on metal contact, especially here where rust does happen. We also have our plastic tank protector. This is what you see when you look under the car. It's cleaned up as much as it's gonna get cleaned up. It's ready to go. So, uh, time to throw everything in. So I was this close to having the fuel tank in and done. This close, buttoning everything up. I ran into a problem, led to a bigger problem. So what I did, I'll go down here and I'll show you. So when I installed the fuel filler neck, you see that hook there? The uh, filler tube secure hook, I had that in backwards. Not the big a deal, drop the tank, pull the tube out, reverse it, be done. The bigger problem I had, I bought hardware for this son of a bitch. Went out, bought longer bolts that would actually reach because the straps had an issue actually reaching. And I want to make it clear, this tank is nowhere any bigger than the one that came out of it. I did measurements this morning because I was kind of thinking it might be. No, it's the same size. So let me show you what happened. Okay. This is one of the original strap bolts. Wouldn't reach. So went, got hardware. As you can see, I get a little bit of length. Might have been a touch too much, but I could live with a little bit. I could adjust fire. I took this bolt in, I measured it, made sure the thread was right and everything, okay? Now, what happened? As you can plainly see, the threads are mangled, both bolts. These are the lock nuts. Let's see if I can get you a good visual. They're mauled, absolutely fucking destroyed. So now, new lock nuts, probably more new hardware, because I'm not sure that's gonna reach even with. Yeah, this shit's fun. And we finally selected the sex of our Mustang. It's a boy, rather it's a stick. <laughs> uh, we were on a hunt for a transmission. It's been the long hanging question mark when it comes to how we're powering this thing. And uh, the decision was made, manual transmission completely. I would have taken an AOD if one had come up. Um, it wouldn't have bothered me that much, but we found that the local junkyard was getting slammed with used cars because 
nobody wants them or can afford them or whatever the case. So we found a 99 V6 Mustang. It looked like it had been driven in. The car was just fine, except for it had a broken clutch cable. That's what did it in. That's why it got sent in. So transmission, pedal box assembly, everything you see minus I've got the fork, I've got the bearing, and the pedals are in the car. All of that for 300 bucks, taken out, ready to hand off. My only complaint, they cut all the wires like as close as humanely possible. So I'm gonna have to get new switches regardless of what I do, but still, not the worst thing ever. Um, I'm not too big a fan of the Hitachi wand shifter, but that'll go away. Uh, box feels good was sent to me more or less dry. There's still a bit of residual transmission fluid coming out of it, but Overall, I'm happy I've got to get some bell housing bolts, which is a minor deal uh, Working on getting some parts the clutch the fork the cable um, We're going to go through it um, I have a deal in place where I'm gonna have somebody who actually knows what they're doing help me with this because I've never I haven't messed with a manual transmission in well over 10 years, and I haven't done anything more in depth than removal at all. So I'm calling in some help. But yeah, five speed. Perfect.